Hey guys, today we're showing you how to make make ahead ground beef in an electric pressure cooker. Oh, we're having a whole lot of fun. You want to drain off I'm all that XX? Splash you with all the hot liquid is what I'm gonna do. You show sure enough did. Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen. I am Chris from Recipes at Crock.com. I am Mikey from Recipes at Crock. Com. And we are here today to show you how to make make a head ground beef in an electric pressure cooker. We've shown you guys this in our slow cooker before. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a ninja that has the browning feature on it and it's real easy to ch 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 do it up. But you got to stand there forever and be chopping it up. We're going to show you a really quick and easy way to do it in an instant pot or a foodie or a crock pot express. Something that is an electric pressure cooker. Yes, and so one of the reasons why we like to do this is if you were going to just do one pound of ground beef, yeah, you could do that really easy on a skillet or in a browning slow cooker, but we like to do four pounds at a time and freeze our cooked up, already seasoned ground beef so we can easily make casseroles and soups and make a lot of those ground beef slow cooker recipes. Um, by just dump and go. You can a lot of times dump the cooked ground beef in there with the rest of your mm -hmm. ingredients and just let it go instead of having to do the browning step the morning of the recipe that you're trying to cook. Yeah. Put this in the freezer, it'll be good for a little while mm -hmm. in your freezer and then you can just pull it yes. out and you've got ground beef that's made up for, I don't know, let's say spaghetti sauce if you want mm -hmm. to do a meat sauce or tacos because mm -hmm. we all love tacos. Anything like that, all you got to do is pull it out. It's already ready to go in your freezer. Heat it back up and you're good to go. And we're going to show you today how we bag it up because when we showed you guys our make ahead taco meat, um, we had some folks say, oh, we wish you would have showed us the step of how to go ahead and bag it up. So, so I tell you what, we'll right now we're going to show you that when we finish this up, we're going to bag it up. No diggity. <laughs> okay, so what we have right now is four pounds of ground beef in our electric pressure cooker. This is 80-20. If you prefer leaner ground beef, go ahead and do this. Uh, <laughs> use leaner ground beef. You're going to actually have more ground beef at the end because of leaner ground beef, less fat is going yep. to cook off. So we've got that already in here and we're going to do this in about two steps to kind of help make us make sure that we have ground beef uh, crumbled up at the end and not um, like a meatloaf inside. So what we've got are the two, uh, or we've got four pounds in here and you're just going to crumble it up as much as you can. With it raw, you can't really crumble it tons. No, but you can break it down yes. pretty good. Like, here we go. Let's see if I can break it down. Break, break, break it down. Just like While this. he's doing that, you need to get together one cup of beef broth. If you are using a larger electric pressure cooker, you might bump that up to um, a cup and a half. We're going to drain off the liquid in the end, but all, even if your meat produces liquid, you still need liquid in an electric pressure cooker to help it come to pressure. So we've got a cup of broth, and then we've just got the seasoning that we would normally use. Salt, pepper, um, we're gonna go light on the salt because we know our broth has got salt in it. And then if you want to, if a lot of your recipes call for garlic and onion, I like to have it already added into the ground beef so I don't have to keep adding it. And so you can add as much garlic and onion as you want. We're probably gonna add a couple tablespoons of each. I've also done this where I've used fresh onion and just added enough chopped onion to, to the pot. So what I'm gonna do is have, or I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the broth. Um, we're going to remove our little ground beef stick here. Mix and chop. That's the yeah. zing. Yep. Whatever you want to use. We've got some in our store if you want to check it out. Yep. Uh, he's talking about our Amazon mm -hmm. influencer shop. Description down below. You'll see it right below the recipe. Yep. So we're just going to put a couple tablespoons just to give it some uh, flavor beyond the beef. Yep. And a couple tablespoons of the onion. Like I said, you could use fresh if that's what you prefer. We're just going to use the other side for ease. Um, here and I'm gonna go ahead and salt and pepper too just because like I said I like to make this as easy as can be whenever we're making our recipes because this makes making tons of uh, stovetop recipes and crock-pot recipes super duper easy to throw together we'll go ahead and mix that down yeah. in there oh we got stuff on the outside of the I just cleaned this one I up. know. 
Okay, it doesn't matter because we're only going to put it under pressure for five minutes the first time, and we're going to quick release. Hey, look at that. Mm -hmm. That's a stainless steel pot. <laughs> hey, Ninja, take note. Hey. <laughs> I got it. Okay, you're gonna do it. Are you the pro? No eyes. Look at that. Okay, we're gonna seal this and we are going to put it under high pressure for five minutes and quick release. We're just doing that so that we can get the ground beef a little browned so that we can get in there and break it up one more time before we cook it. And so she's gonna set it on there, we're gonna let it do its thing, and then I'll reclean the set. Ah. Uh, so just five minutes. And we're going to go ahead and I think it's been a long time since I've used my Instant Pot. <laughs> so we I missed you. It's like, okay, it's just going to go ahead and go. Okay, so we're going to come up to pressure. It's going to go for five minutes. We're going to quick release, and we'll see you back here in three, two, one. And we're back and came up to pressure. Stayed there for five minutes. Soon as it uh, finished the five-minute timer, a little alarm came off. And we went ahead and released the pressure on it, doing a quick release, and it looks like that now like meat that's not done yet it is not done no. it may look brown on the outside but when you run your mix and chop mix and your chop whatever it, it is you're gonna see that it's not now I didn't wash this in between I will now wash it after this because I don't want any raw um, ground beef to touch the finished product but this is gonna go cook again. We're just using this to break all this ground beef up one more time before we cook it to finish it out. So if it I'm, smells I'm, really good in this kitchen right now. I'm gonna let you do this because I'm like at a weird angle. I'll just do it real quick. Yeah. So now all we're gonna do is we're gonna put the lid back on and we're going to cook it for another 10 minutes. And then we can quick release again because we're gonna just drain off all that liquid and lay it out to cool. And how finely do you want me to chop this up? I personally don't like it pre-chewed like you do. I always give him a hard time. We call it pre-chewed, that sounds gross. She likes it <laughs> chunky, like me. <laughs> I like it chunky because I like to use it in chili and stuff like that, and you prefer your ground beef more finely tuned. Yes. So. Um, we meet happily in the middle and I give her about three chunks and the rest of it are finely tuned. <laughs> Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the lid back on. I'm going to wash this. Yes, and then we will see you back here in three, two, one. Alright, we are back. Now that rose up the pressure, which didn't take long because it was already hot in there, stayed there for ten minutes. And when the alarm went off, we did a quick release. And now, ah, the music says it's done. And she looks just like that. She looks kind of like she did before, only completely cooked now. You got some big chunks, you got a little finely chopped chunks, so we're both going to be happy about this. But now, what we're going to show you is how we bag it up. No, we're going to cool it off first. Well, we're going to cool it off first, then we're going to bag it up. So, don't do what I just about did. Don't just grab the pot, because that would not be intelligent. And you know me, I'm trying to get there. So, first what Chris is going to do is just going to pour that. it. Say, oh, yeah, I better hold this. You want to drain off I'm all that excess. I'm going to you with all the hot liquid is what I'm going to do. You sure enough did. By the way, it's going to be hot. If yes. you want to let it cool off in there for a little bit, I'm not going to blame you. Otherwise, well, you're going to dump it all over your loving, wonderful, adorable husband like that. <laughs> all right. So. All right. So. Notice. Metal spoon. In metal. That's what I've learned. That's okay. If you're doing this in a stainless steel colander, don't do what I'm doing. Or not a stainless steel. Or or yeah, yeah or as yeah, long it's, as it's yeah. stainless steel. Okay. If it's so, if it's nonstick, don't, don't do, do that. that. Don't do that because then he gets yelled at. Yeah, a lot. Okay, so then in a uh, a pan like it could be a cookie sheet. This is actually our bacon pans. Mm -hmm. um, just after you drain off the liquid, you get most of it out of there. Yep. Just, we're going to spread it out to cool so that it comes down to around room temperature. Oh, steam. Yes, because it's really hot, so it's hard to handle right now. Grab the camera, honey. Where is it? It's over here. So, all right, so Chris is going to grab the camera real quick so we can show you what ground meat looks like. It's, no. it's uh, right over there, right where I told you it was. All right. So just spread it out, let it air out a little bit, Yep. cool off. Because you don't want to take super, super, super hot stuff and stick it right in the freezer. 
Nope. One, it'll melt down the other stuff that's in your freezer. Not good. It just isn't good. And um, I'm not so sure that that doesn't lead to more ice crystals, yeah. too. Yeah, well, you got, you got all this steam, so you want all the air out of the bags or as much of the air as possible. And if you put it in there like this right now in those bags, the steam is going to, like open up in the bags, you know what I mean? Then you're gonna so, have all that air and that's how you get the, the frozen ice crystals in there. So me burn. meanwhile, while this is cooling, meanwhile, <laughs> the way I like to do it is I get four regular size bags and I'll be honest, if if I if I had them I would use quart size freezer bags, but I don't. But the way that I'm getting around this is I'm dividing it into my portions into these four bags. And then I'm placing those four bags inside of a freezer bag. So I'm getting double coverage in my freezer, but also um, I'm, I'm going to just use storage bags for the inside to divide it into my portions. So we're going to let this cool. Once this is cool, we will be back and we will show you how we divide it up into the bags and get it in the freezer. So I'm going to clean up the set again in three. You didn't two. clean it up last time. I'm going to clean up the set for the first time in three, <laughs> two, one. Alrighty, we are back. Okay, our ground beef has cooled. It's probably been about 10, 15 minutes for it to cool off. Look, I can do this and I won't even cry. Yeah. And so the only other thing I've done is I went ahead and used a Sharpie on the outside of my freezer bag to say that's what's in here. I know we're going to go through it quickly or I'd be dating it but I'm not going to date it because... She's we'll... already married. Yeah. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Um, to make this easy, what I've done over the years is I like using like a two cup measuring cup to stick my plastic bag inside of. It's not going to get dirty or anything because I'm just going to tuck the corner. I'm going to hold it anyway, so it's always good to have the help. I'm going to tuck the corner over there. So the way you divide this is you just kind of eyeball it and divide it in half so just make a line down the middle and then a line down the middle of each of those Ta -da. exact science is what's going on here math y'all yes so all i do is i tuck the corner into this you're gonna hold it for I'll me i'll hold it for you and i just scoop it in there easy peasy and that way i'm holding it over so whatever falls out goes right back in there yep go okay so what you're going to want to do in all of these is make sure and get all the air out as much as possible air is your enemy anytime you use any kind of freezer cooking so we want to kind of zip this up as much as possible and squeeze I even roll it a little bit to just get as much um, of the air out now if you have those handy dandy like freezer seal vacuum sealers then, awesome then that's awesome that's great now you can leave it clumped up like this or you could flatten it out like what Mikey's doing that it gets the chunks out <laughs> yep <laughs> so um it all depends on how your freezer is set up you could if you needed them to stay flat for you so you can really stack things in your freezer you could put these on another cookie sheet and freeze them initially laying flat and then stack them in the in the freezer bag, like freeze them for like a couple hours until they get firm. And then you could stack them in your freezer bag and you'd have everything nice and flat. If you just throw them in there and confession, I do that all the time. Sometimes they might kind of form around each other and you might have to use a little um, muscle to break them apart to get them out. But I'm being real. We do that all the time. We just toss it in there. Um, but like I said, if you have limited freezer space, laying them flat really helps um, save a lot of space. So we just take these four. And like I said, you can either do it right now or you can wait until after they've kind of flash frozen. Maybe if we go one at a time. Ah, oh, there we go. I did it one bag at a time. Johnny Cash action there for you. And then that just goes in your freezer. And then you can grab one at a time out. 
Um, a lot of times whenever I'm cooking it, since it's already cooked and already kind of crumbled up, it reheats pretty quickly. So a lot of times I I will throw that into... <laughs> See, we don't need a vacuum sealer. We just need to lay on to it. We have Mikey. Um, no, what I'll do... Four pounds right there. What, what I will do is I will just like toss this in soups and things um, and, and just make it sure and stir after about an hour and it heats it right back up. I also toss it straight into a skillet a lot of times when I'm making um, cheeseburger salad or things like that that I just need. You could do that with like sloppy joes and that kind of thing um, or spaghetti sauce because it heats it up pretty quickly because it's very easy to break apart. And it's already cooked. Yep. Ta-da! So if you like this video, we'd love for you to give us a thumbs up. If you are not already a member of the Crock Posse, we'd love for you to join our slow cooking, electric pressure cooking family around here by clicking subscribe. If you'd like notify, click the ding -a -ling. And that's the bell down below, and that will tell you every time we upload a video. But whatever you do, laugh often, eat good food, and speak life. Bye, guys. Hamburger, hamburger. She took away my hamburger. Hey, guys, today we. Make make ahead ground beef in your Electra. Electra. Stop it. It keeps every time we hit record, it gets knocked more that way. Pretty soon they're gonna be out on the deck. If you wanna see the latest, click on the left right here. If you feel like subscribing, click on the right, my dear. And if you think we're funny enough to send us money, click the page.